to begin their win and in. Yeah, here we go. This is our matchup here for you all Pokemon fans. Brent Tonneson, no, not shy to be on the camera once again. He's a regular on broadcast, a regional winner back home in Australia as well. But we have seen him across the world traveling, trying to fight for all of those CP and prize money opportunities at regional events, piloting Charizard EX. A Liverpool finalist who then flew all the way back home to then win regional, uh, Mr. Worldwide, traveling, Mr. Worldwide, traveling everywhere to try and compete, and he looks locked in right now. Um, a very smiley character, yep. loves to have a little laugh, but when he's in these moments, he is able to focus that next level. And on the other side. Yeah, on the other side, quarantine um, will be facing up against Brent, of course, with a deck we saw earlier sort of wipe the floor with his opponent, that Dialga V-Star uh, deck, just being able to burst through very quickly, take multiple turns, multiple big knockouts. It's gonna be, it could be a quick, like quick match, but the way that Brent's kind of built this deck, this isn't a very conventional Charizard EX deck, not by any means. It's got some control elements in there. It'd be interesting how the fire element of a Charizard deck can be utilized against Dialga. <laughs> you know, it seems crazy when you're playing fire energy to not be able to hit for weakness, but with Charizard EX being a, a dark type Pokemon, uh, it doesn't quite work out that way. But you do have Radiant Charizard towards the end, and sometimes those early heat tackles can really set up a nice knockout on the V Star. So we'll see how that all pans out as they put their prizes out, and round nine will begin with a tough prizing of Radiant Charizard, but nothing too crazy. And the players are ready to kick off to Super Rod. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, depending on how that resource management will be going forward. We'll have access to just one Super Rod in that deck, but let's see how these players are gonna navigate this matchup. Because as I mentioned, it's a bit of an unconventional list from Brent. Playing that Charizard EX deck does have access to things like Airy, you know, that fantastic supporter card that we've highlighted so often. Um, but here we go. We do kick things off here with Brent kicking us off with a buddy, buddy Poffin. Oh, seeing them all over the hall. Such a good item card. Introducing Temporal Forces, really improving the consistency of these evolving decks. And this first deck check there, you might have seen a little flash of a lightning type Pokemon in Charizard EX. What's going on there? Yeah, that Reggie Alecki has been introduced to Brent's version um, of Charizard EX. Has that fantastic attack, Electromagnetic Sonar for a colorless energy, where you can put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. So an opportunity to try and control the board, say, with things like Airy, things like TM Devolution, um, and there's a number of different cards that could play a little bit apart, maybe less useful sometimes against the Alga but let's see if it comes to fruition. At the end of this weekend, I'm gonna ask every one of these uh, Reggie Alecki users, how many times did they actually use it? Because in, in practice, I don't know how often it will come through. It, as an idea, brilliant. <laughs> and, and that's always the question when you start including these interesting additions to your deck. How useful actually are they? Yeah, for sure. We do just end the turn with that Rotom V instant charge there, Brent drawing three cards and ending his turn. Over to Quarantine now. This is gonna be your deck. Might continue, you're wearing that Belden badge. Oh, I do love a Metagross. <laughs> and so it's been nice seeing the, uh, the Metagross line with Beldum and Metan coming through. Although not many people including the uh, Metagross as a little final evolution, damage output. Um, but it can be included in some, some versions of the list. But ultimately, it's all about Dialga. That is such a powerful card that has really just not had its opportunity to shine as it's lacked the energy acceleration required uh, to, to quickly power itself up. But now Matang is in the format coming out in Temporal Forces. Mm -hmm. It allows you to use one of the most powerful V-Star attacks in the format, Metal Maker, um, allowing you to look at the top four cards Take any energy you find there, attach it to your metal Pokemon, and then put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So a, a very good card to set that Dialga up. Yeah, Dialga just quarantine ending that turn with a metal coating there from the origin form, Dialga V, attaching two uh, metal energies from the discard pile to this Pokemon, and just setting himself up ready for future turns as Brent now opens up with another Buddy Buddy Puffin and will begin trying to set up his board so he can handle those that potential dangerous attack 
from a Dialga Vista. Oh, look at that. The Rotom really helping out with that instant charge, drawing into the Rare Candy, the Pidgeot EX, the Charizard EX, all of those vital pieces for an early turn. So Brent showing off the, the dream start here. And that Charizard EX is a little bit out of range for the Origin Form Di Dialga V-Star. Yeah, of course, just evolving up to the Terra Charizard EX there. Does take away the fire typing as it becomes a dark type Pokemon. There's the gust up of the Bidoof, removing that draw power that Quarantine will have to try and typically rely on as he starts utilizing Metal Maker and all the sort of Dialga um, V-Star attacks. And there's Burning Darkness for the first prize of this round nine at EUIC 2024. It's not looking great, just a very small hand there. And I think that's just gonna be an attack. Is that all that's possible? Yeah, it does have Ultra Ball in hand, but no real sort of additional support Pokemon it could be utilized now that the Bidoof was knocked out. Could have maybe utilized Ultra Ball, probably wouldn't have wanted to give up the V-Star too easily. But draw power important there as he does just swing for 160 damage. So Pidgeot EX really shining this weekend. Being able to take any card from your deck with that quick search. Could be it could be a vital supporter. Mm -hmm. It could just be like it could be a an important setup card. And in this situation it's an Arvin to help set up for those future turns. Uh, I mean it could literally just be a super rod if you need to recover anything. And that's why it's so good and why a lot of top players really enjoy this deck because it allows you to select exactly what you need and when you need it. Yeah, unfortunately not the start Quarantine had hoped for here. Hasn't lost a round yet at this tournament. Currently 4-0-4. Four, four. Um, but, you know, not looking in a fantastic spot here as we do see the V-Star Star Alchemy utilized by that Forest Seal Stone attached to that Rotom V. As we see more combo pieces come down, raining down with fire here as the Charizard EX is evolved up on the bench as well. So just putting those Charizard EX out of range, just the six fire energy and the one missed energy. So uh, most of those energy actually in Brent's hand. So we'll have to just manually attach at this stage, but it's got plenty of time to work with. That's the advantage with a slow start from your opponent is you can just let that Charizard EX ramp up as the Burning Darkness damage increases. There is no oh, rush at that point. What an unfortunate top deck there. <laughs> oh no. The, the barrel, of course, it was already knocked out the previous turn and wouldn't have been able to do anything anyway. Does have to choose that Mew EX and put it down on to the bench. An easy target for Brent considering he has out two bosses orders or anything important to gust up that Mew EX and just swing away for 180 damage with ease. But don't count out the Star Kronos. Such a powerful attack. Can really swing the game back into favor. And there is a research. So if a Metang is found here and some energy is accelerated, that Charizard EX could be knocked out and a, another turn could happen. And yep. if you get more energy onto that Diogo V-Star, it does quickly ramp up. Oh, there it is. Metal Maker's live. Start thinning out the deck a little bit more here with that Nest Ball and then start trying to burst into that fantastic Star Kronos attack. The Alga V also found as well, so trying to set up a backup attacker. We're looking good here. It was a bit of a struggle a moment ago. Restart, that's all it took. Restart, one restart, and it's brought Coratine back into the game. I mean, the Bibara would have been nicer, so <laughs> smart from Brent to target that down. Of but course. The Star Kronos here, if, if it is possible, could be huge. Energy attachment from hand available as well, I believe. Still, here's the ability. Top four. Any energy? Ooh. Is that two? Is that perfect numbers? I think so. With so one they'll... energy attachment from hand as well. And then next turn, we'll be able to get even more energy in play. So we'll see what happens here. And this is what people forget. When you can take two turns in a row, it really ramps up very quickly. We had it last format with the Medicham V, and that was such a, a powerful card which could swing games in your favor. And I think Dialga has just been left forgotten as a card as to how good it could be. And then Matang has brought it back to life. And this turn changes everything. Disruption is also possible despite using that research earlier because you get to play two supporters across those two turns. Energy attachment to the bench. So just a swing 
with Metal Blast here for okay. the KO. So saving uh, that V-Star power for the time, or attack for this moment here. Interesting. I guess the Rotom V into the Pidgeot EX could be possible. And yep. if you take those four prizes, you're very susceptible to a disruption at that point. Yeah, so just kind of saving it for that one burst turn potential. So if Corentin can maybe get two Matangs on board, that's multiple outs to Metal Maker, get all those energies on the board, start targeting the right Pokemon, and then it's, you know, the writing on the wall could be on Brent's side. Yeah, and the, the, the constant worry that it could happen at any moment is always going to be there for Brent. And um, what was that? That's going to be a Charizard EX knockout. There was 180 on that Dialga. And if the Charmeleon was possible to power up earlier, that could have been the way to knock it out. And this is it, right? Radiant, Radiant Charizard towards the end of the game is a key attacker for Brent. Yeah, and I'm not too sure if I maybe just saw that he was able to take it from the prizes. I think as so. Well. So there's an, there's an opportunity there to try and weave in a single prizer. But this is a big turn here for Corentin. Does hit the Dialga. Oh, no, sorry, that was the discard. Does have Ultra Ball catcher. and yeah, Ultra Ball and Super Rod, which is kind of unfortunate cards to use around. Interesting. Get energies. Ultra Ball can try and dig for the Dialga V Star. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, he wanted to try and put energies back into the deck to try and increase the odds of Metal Maker here. Does have restart available. Ultra Ball in hand, three cards. How best can he sequence this? to maximize the chances of hitting a Star Cronus this turn. On the right Pokemon as well. Yeah. I mean, the Star Cronus on the Rotom would be huge. Uh, potentially then into a Gust on the Pidgeot EX. Put it in range. So four prize cards needed. But it is possible to get those without Brent taking another turn. It's just going to have to require a lot of fortune, I think. Doesn't necessarily lose the turn if he gives Brent one more, because it's still three prizes uh, that Brent requires. And just yeah. deciding whether to take the big risk, and it's going to go for it. It's, it's massive here. Maybe, it. maybe could have promoted something else. Did he top deck the primal, uh, the, the, the prime catcher? That was in the hand, and I think just deciding whether to go for the Iono here. If he, if he pushed something else forward first, and then maybe just guaranteed the, the prime catcher onto the, with the Mu EX and the active, then has the opportunity to maneuver around That's just the mean. Iono. What's it going to be here? Big hand. Is that Ooh, another Matang? It's another Matang, but is the Di Dialga V-Star there? Badoof can be played down. Some cards can be played out as well. So again, filling those opportunities. Dialga comes down. Of course, does need that secondary attacker to go. I mean, if you evolve the Dialga, it's out of range of a Charizard, but then you've got the Mu EX as a liability on the bench and the new Dialga V that's been put down. So almost like a very similar scenario. This is it's quite a big, here's Metal Maker. One out of the four here, the other three cards go to the bottom of the deck after being shuffled. So just to the active. Just struggling to navigate the, the, the addition of energy, the evolution of the Dialga. Hits three there, so there's two and one to the bench to Dialga V as well. Yeah, plenty of energy coming through. Draw two cards from Radiant Greninja. Doesn't Ooh. hit. Not quite, but we'll be able to still attack. It's not going to be a knockout, maybe, with the... Is that a Defiance Band on the active? So it will it's still be... Four. Still will be a knockout. Yeah, still gets the knockout here on the Rotom B. Just needs to start thinking about powering up that second one and start swinging away. Maybe having to force himself up against that Pidgeot. EX as well, it does go down to two prizes, takes the advantage here. Brent has to deal with the Diago with the most energies on this turn. Yeah, and, and from Brent's point of view, really trying to utilize that Radiant Charizard now, but it was disrupted out the hand of the INO. Does have the Nest Ball, but to get an energy onto that would be quite tricky. Pidgeot EX. You kind of want to use that Pidgeot EX for maybe a supporter this yeah, turn. of course. Given the opportunity, but... At least that's one way to try and guarantee it, if possible. Yeah, I guess with Pidgeot EX, if you ever need one piece for anything, you're already already guaranteed. Um, I think there was one fire energy in that previous hand, so we'll be able to utilize that here. So going to be using that Pidgeot EX quick search now. 
And this has been a fascinating matchup to navigate towards the end. Yeah, this is truly interesting. I'm not too sure how much testing you really would have to put into. There's the evolution up um, from the Charizard EX to, to just get the energy and get it onto the board of that Radiant Charizard. We've seen it be a true battle of the Radiant Pokemon in previous formats as well. We know Radiant Greninja has an incredible attack and an incredible ability. In reality, Radiant Charizard does as well, being able to, in a similar way, ramp up as uh, the game progresses. Um, and then we've got that Excited Heart into the Combustion Blast, so 250 damage. Are you going to bench that Reggie Alecki? <laughs> Brent, at this stage, is just maybe trying to thin the, the hand a little bit, but that will be a knockout, so energy required. We need to see the uh, Di Dialga V-Star. But by putting down a one prizer, that could potentially set up the one prizer into one prizer knockout, but you're assuming that if enough turns are taken with that Metang, you'll, you'll ramp up the damage. But Bidoof is going to go down quite, here. Quite tough here. There's that Nest Ball, and now it's unplayable. So maybe would have liked to have seen that just played just to get out of the hands, maybe thin down a little bit more before that Bidoof came down. There's the energy attachment from hands. Looks like maybe an Iono. It could be a trapping of that Charizard. Could find a way to maneuver one additional turn if that Charizard is unable to maneuver out of the active spot because Combustion Blast means that you can't attack with Combustion Blast once again. Not much in that hand to work with. Already played a supporter, so the Cypher Maniac's code breaking, not doing a huge amount here. And we'll start those Metal Makers. Misses. Ooh. Big miss. I mean, you wonder at this stage how much energy is left in the deck. And that's always the question when you're doing these Metal Makers. How many energy are there? Just one. I mean, he's one away from a Star Kronos. Next turn, if he's able to find the Dialga V-Star, does have draw power with the Mew, does have uh, Cypher Maniac's code breaking in hand as well. So there's ways, but he needs, it looks like, an extra turn here because he could Star Kronos into the single prize and then find a way just to gust up the Reggie Alecki that's been placed down by Brent. Oh, the Ultra Ball. So that will get the Dialga V-Star, but just one energy short here on that Star Kronos. I think you just have to hold. Maybe. Just hope there's no way to get the, the Charizard out of the active. Yeah, maybe just send up the metal, uh, the D origin form Dialga V and just metal coating. It's just oh, a scoop. Just a scoop. I think the Prime oh, Catcher was available for Brent, so would be able to move that Radiant Charizard out of the active, and so Brent does take game one, but it was a tricky game. It wasn't ever in Brent's favor because the Star Kronos was always available, but just unfortunate for uh, the Dialga V-Star not quite getting powered up, never able to use that Star Kronos, so Corrington not able to get the attack off, but you can see how close it is. Yeah. The potential is there for the deck. It just needs to hit those energies off the Meta Maker, hit all the cards needed throughout the process. Yeah, what's really interesting is that, of course, with this type of Charizard EX set that Brent's playing, as we do get a chance to recap what's just happened in game one, as Brent took it down there with that Prime Catch, obviously utilizing Pidgeot's quick search to great effects, but we're seeing Prime Catcher as the A spec of choice. But is that to utilize it alongside Reggie Alecki? You know, being able to use it multiple times is a great effect as well. You know, maybe bring, bringing up something uh, less useful, trapping something, using area a couple of times, setting up your own board in the meantime. And it's just one way to play Charizard. That's a little bit different to the conventional player maximum belt A spec and set. Yeah, well, the Diago V had to be utilized there with the 180 damage attack, temporal rupture. But typically, what we want to see is that Star Kronos, and the V-Star was not allowed to be used there, as it was never possible. And that's going to be where that early Bidoof knockout could have been so vital in that game. You know, taking away the draw engine from the Bibarel, we saw how tough it was for Corentin to get the cards needed. And especially once you start Metal Maker, uh, using your Metal Maker to get the energy out the deck, that's when we start to see uh, those Bibarels be very effective. Ooh, two Charmanders there for Brent. Yeah, and three. Metal energies after the 14 there. I mean, there are still quite a lot, but we do go into game two of our Swiss round nine now. Quarantine does have to make it really vital here to try and take the win and try to still give himself an opportunity 
to push into day two as Brent has the advantage. It's winning in stage for these guys. Brent sitting there with the first win. Plenty of time still on the clock. And uh, the heavy ball. We mentioned <laughs> those, those Charmanders. There's also a Pidgey in there. So uh, the dream scenario for that heavy ball. And also speeds up the prize check process. <laughs> yeah, makes things a little bit easier going forward for the rest of this game. Plenty of time still. And we know that sometimes both of these decks can start swinging for a lot of damage quite quickly. So really important to just try and get through these games as quick as possible with Brent's version, just trying to make sure he's able to take down uh, this Dialga V-Star deck in front of him right now. That hand looking good for Brent. So a Buddy Buddy Poffin and an S ball. Brilliant. Setting up with the Charmander there. It looked like he started his prize check. Um, you have just heavy balled. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's always like just kind of double checking, triple checking. You know, this is a tense scenario for both of these players. Of course, you know, Brent has been on the stage before. Corentin's also, you know, had a couple of really good finishes um, in recent times as well. So this is important, remember, winning in. And there's the Rotom V from that nest ball. Is the Pidgey in hand or just opting to not go for the Pidgey this game? It's, it's one of those where you're kind of letting loose if you're going to start utilizing some of those sort of lower HP Pokemon, easier to target and knock out. Uh, interesting, I just reminded myself that we had a little look at what A specs a lot of decks have been using throughout. Charizard EX, out of the sort of almost 600, just over 400 of them play Maximum Belt. Oh my. And just over 100 play Prime Catcher. So Brent's one of those 111, I believe, players who are playing Prime Catcher this weekend. Shout out to the three Master Ball users. <laughs> Consistency is king. <laughs> and the three people who <laughs> couldn't get their A specs in time, so decided yeah. not to play any. Yeah, well, sometimes you just don't need it. You can replace Prime Catcher, remember? That's true. With uh, Ancient Drum. <laughs> <laughs> Rotom V, instant charge there. Brent now just replenishing that hand with a further three cards as it goes back over to Quarantine. And now we do see a Nest Ball just being played on this side. A Radiant Greninja hits the field, a card we've seen so often since its release and inception into the format. You know a card is good when its attack is one of its greatest strengths, and it pe features in decks where you can't even attack with it. Yeah. That's how good the ability <laughs> is on Radiant Greninja. There's a pitching of the Metal Energy to draw two further cards. Another Dialga V hits the board as well. TM Evolution. An opportunity to try and bring in that Metal Maker, Matang, and also the Babao and set up future turns. Quarantine's quite happy to kind of give up a prize or two sometimes with this deck. Yeah, once set up, you know you can start coming back because that V-Star attack gives you another turn. Uh, can really punish decks towards the end of the game, especially as you, you can take out the barrels whilst also taking out yep. big attackers. You can, in this matchup, you can take out something like a Rotom V and then straight away afterwards take out the Pidgeot EX. Mm -hmm. And these kinds of turns are crazy swing turns back in favor of Dialga. But it does sometimes struggle to set up as we saw in the last game. And it seems pretty solid here on the side of Quarantine. I mean, it wasn't, as we already mentioned, it wasn't very far though. So that, it didn't, didn't feel like he had to stretch. He could stretch as far as he would have liked. He had to play Iono, which only limited him to like four cards. Can only utilize Mew EX with the restart ability rather than the barrel. But here we go. We've got the board set up, which is a li looking a little bit more better for Corentin's side. We'll see what cards are available. That heat tackle, mighty effective into Dialga because it does hit for 60 rather than the 30 which can set up an early knockout with a Charizard EX on the fully evolved Dialga V-Star. Typically, we see Heat Tackle being a great attacker into the V-Stars because it sets up future knockouts. Yep. Getting double value into this or the Golden Go is another situation where that happens. And that's where the Heat Tackle becomes most valuable. Yeah, let's just see how this is going to be navigating. We do see the Heat Tackle there, as you just correctly mentioned. 60 damage because of the fire weakness. 10 damage to itself. And now back over to Corinth to try and formulate his game plan. As you see, the, that prime catcher there was straight at the bottom. Little Beldum there. I see yourself just pointing at your little pin. Oh, my little Beldum pin badge. Little cutie. Are you uh, going to evolve it up? I feel like Beldum is one of my favorite Metatype Pokemon, just because every single one of its cards has so much character, despite looking <laughs> very similar. 
It's why I think that's so beautiful about some of these Pokemon where they don't move too much, but they still have a little bit of character to them. <laughs> As the evolution there now, Matang hits the Metal Maker for one energy. Um, not as much value as, as Corentin maybe would have liked. We do see the pitch this is of going the concealed well. cards now. But yes, we're moving at pace. We're gliding. There's the Professor's research in hand. A lot of cards to pitch away, though. Energy attachment to the bench. Discarding two energies, the 1-1 one, one barrel line. We saw how vital it was for Brent to take down the Bidoof. Would there be an opportunity to try and take down the Bibaro at some point as well? Evolution up. The Alga Vista in the active spot now and on the bench. Massive. Yeah, and the Defiance Band, useful way to get the damage modifier. You know, being 280 HP Pokemon puts you out of range of Charizard EX for quite a while. And Radiant Charizard will be able to knock out later on, but in these early stages, it just gives a bit of time for Diago V-Star to set up. Yep, Defiance Bands only really activating when you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, but because there's a two prize only active, and Brent's likely to have to go through it, he's probably going to activate it unless Brent chooses to find a way around it, of course. So just asking lots of questions of each other at this stage. And I do wonder, whenever you see a deck like Dialga V-Star, how much a player like Brent has prepared for this well, matchup. Yeah, exactly. Or how much he's having to work it out on the fly right now. Yeah, I sort of kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier and just said, like, is it in your thinking for testing the matchups? I mean, it started to gain a lot of traction um, in sort of the last couple of weeks, I believe. Um, but then, you know, you still got to think about the wider meta game. I mean, how many Diagas are you truly going to be facing? Not even in our top 12 decks, is it? I don't believe so. But, you know, it's got some inherent power. It's one of the few decks we've shown multiple times this weekend as the V-Star ability, Star Alchemy, is used on that Forest Sealstone. Forest Sealstone, so consistent, so many lists, especially those with the basic Vs, which are utilized for their abilities. You can utilize the Forest Seal after the fact to nurture any card out of your deck. Same way the Quick Search does here and that's going to help set up for Brent now, looking to try and get a big knockout. Yeah, why not just have a nice, easy, quick search via a tool card from that powerful supporter we've highlighted in one of our previous rounds, Mike. Arvin there, still kind of sat on the board with that rare candy just on top of it, but it's, uh, it's been utilized, of course. Looks like Brent's finding a route to maybe start swinging with that Charizard, Radiant Charizard early as well. We mentioned when it was prized in the first game how important it is in this matchup. Not only is it a single prizer, but it is that fire type attacker that is available in a deck full of fire energy, so can knock out any uh, metal Pokemon in play, hitting for 250 damage, doubled into Ooh. that 500, and we'll be able to take a knockout. And in this situation, we'll be able to take a knockout on the more energy attached Dialga V-Star on the bench with the Defiance Band, and now we'll be in that active spot, ready to go. Yeah, and that Dialga, Origin Form Dialga V-Star now in the active spot has already taken some damage, only got 220 HP left. So just trying to limit what Corentin has available on his side. Brent's also seen a lot of energies being pitched away into the discard. So just removing so many energies as well just limits those metal makers that may be sort of raining down energy from Corentin's side of the board, ignoring Ignifer Infernal Rain. Three Super Rod in the list will be able to get some of those energies back, but will you see them? That's always the question, right? Well, there's one no, of there, them. There it is. Speak of the devil. But which direction do you go in? Is it just the energies? I mean, like I said, there's been a lot of energies pitched away through concealed cards, obviously lost through that KO on that Dialga V-Star as well. Truly important moments and steps to be taken here from both sides of the board. I guess what is the thing you have to take out here? Maybe that Radiant Charizard is something to worry about. I mean, with the, the Prime Catcher being used to switch it into the active, it's pretty hard for Brent to reset that Radiant Charizard. Can uh, retreat it, but that's a lot of energy taken out of play. And Metal Maker with at least one there. Three cards going to the bottom of the deck. I mean, what's important to note now is that kind of prize mapping. We've heard it from the videos we've had before shown across this weekend. It's so already taken one prize. If it can utilize maybe taking a KO on another single prizer, brings Ooh. it back to even a double hit. 
from the second metal maker here. One energy away from Star Kronos, but will he opt to utilize it now is the real question. Has it in hand? Is this the turn? That is the question. You know, we trust the Dialga V-Star masters who are playing it at this <laughs> event, who will be most familiar with the deck and the timings and when to play these cards. Will this be the turn to take another one? That's uh, a fantastic stadium. We haven't, I'm not too sure if we saw it earlier, uh, when Criso was on the stream also playing the Alga V-Star. Full Metal Lab, Mike. What does it do? So your Metal Pokemon, both yours and your opponent, take 30 less damage from attacks through your opponent's Pokemon. And with such few stadium in the format now, that can often stick around for quite a while. I mean, com in combination with this Iono as well, as five cards there, four quarantine. Just plays down the technical machine just to kind of get it out of the hand for the moment. Looks like he's about to flip it. There's a Star Kronos attack. The Star Kronos has been done. Quarantine will take out the active and get another turn as he resets those ability markers, discards the technical machine evolution, has an opponent disrupted opposite him, and has a Cypher Maniac's code breaking in his hand. So he'll be able to do exactly what they want throughout this turn. Yeah, this is a true spectacle of such a powerful way of sort of trying to steal a turn and take additional prizes here. Has to make it, you know, get maximum value as much as possible because we'll have to try and take two more knockouts to be able to win the game. Four prizes remaining. Has to maximize it as much as he can. Cypher Maniac's code breaking. Two cards very quickly chosen there from Quarantine. Prime catcher. Will, which target will it be? The Pidgeot EX, always a valuable target against any Charizard EX deck. So we'll look to try and disrupt the consistency of Brent's board. Yep, that will put Corentin in, an, in a scenario where he will only have access to his boss to try and maybe take down that last remaining Rotom as well for the final two prizes. But let's see which way it is. Which ones he want to use first? <laughs> Reninja of the Barrel does have energy in hand, so can pitch for the two cards first. Wants to give himself a free retreat out. The Barrel for five, takes the two cards he's just put to the top of that deck. There it is, the Super Rod will really help with those Metal Makers now, and this is why we see the three count of Super Rod in the deck to try and bump up the Metal Energy count. And does have the Ultra Ball here, can maybe increase the Metal Maker odds as well by taking a Pokemon out of the deck. Yeah, what's key here really is trying to power up that second Dialga V-Star on the board as well. Does have the retreat option now with the Radiant Greninja attachment of energy after utilizing that prime catcher now in hand. So it needs one more energy on the active to be able to take a knockout on the Pidgeot EX. There's two. So how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven energies there, Mike. Metal Blast dealing 40 plus 40 more damage for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. So seven times four, 280 damage, just Ooh, the one. Ooh, enough to get the Charizard EX, taking out the biggest attacker on the board, realizing lots of the energy is gone, forces a lot out of Brent here. With just the Pidgeot EX available, we'll have to try and find Super Rod, Rare Candy, and the Charizard EX here to return the knockout. Has at least two of those in hand already with an Ultra Ball and Super Rod, Mike. Is there a way to rebalance the books here from Brent's side? Yeah, and you see the, the acknowledgement. <laughs> oh, of course you have it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was an Iona to four. Still has Pidgeot EX as well with that quick search ability, Does targeting it? that Radiant Charizard, which is an efficient, easy attacker to utilize. Yeah, we'll be able to just use the Ultra Ball to get the Radiant Charizard out and attack for one energy. So it uh, doesn't even need to go the full way with the Charizard EX. Yeah, this is uh, that excited heart just activating, just needs the fire energy. Here's the grab of the Radiant Charizard from the Ultra Ball. Pidgeot EX can guarantee the fire energy. There we go. Just, just second guessing himself, I think, Brent. I mean, this is, there's lots riding here. Well, if you get the Charizard EX out, you can both power up a Charizard EX and a Radiant Charizard, correct? If 
he's able to grab one out, but just choosing to utilize maybe a big attacker, maybe foregoing the Radiant Charizard now. Interesting. So Rare Candy up into the Charizard EX, a big, bulky, 330 HP Pokemon now staring down at a board full of metal Pokemon and then the support of Radiant Greninja and the barrel. Makes sense, because you want to be able to hit two attacks in a row, whereas if you put that Radiant Charizard in the active spot, there is a world where it gives a turn to restabilize for Corentin because on the other side. After all, Brent's final card in his hand is a boss's orders. Well, there we go. That's the knockout there. Brent is asking the question. No energy on board. Lots of energy has just been sent to the discard pile. And there's going to be a super rod. And there's yeah. a boss in hand as well. I remember the super rod was taken from the prizes. So this is big. Two metal makers available. Lots of cards. Not too bad, actually. Almost guarantees the whole deck here with metal maker. It's big. He's got to give it a good shuffle. Brent's going to, I'm sure, going to want to just either cut it or shuffle himself as well. Because this is vital. Metal makers. I mean, how many energy do we need for that Rotom? Just the, just the four, right? Yeah, four times four. It would be 160 plus, plus 40. The 40. That's on the base damage of the Dialga V-Star is enough. Just double checking, trying to guarantee it. There's the first Metal Maker. Here we go, Mike. Four cards. Needs three energy oh, from these he, metal makers now. Has he, has he taken the counter off it again? He's just double checking, second guessing himself. Which one does he utilize first? I guess you just don't want to draw into any energy here. So you're probably going to have to metal maker first, right? The barrels <gasps> first. Oh, draws into one. Not happy. He's gone for it. So does he have enough energies left in the deck? That's the question here. Because they put three back in with the Super Rod. If there is one already in the deck from before, then it will be the case. You've just got to go for it now. What's Let's available. see. Hits There's two. There's two. That's a start. Only needs one more because he's got one from hand. Second Metal Maker, the next four. There it is. There's, it's big. That's going to be it. There's the, the fourth. The final energy. 200 damage on that Rotom V. Cross his orders in hand with all that energy. And that will be enough to take the knockout here. We're going to gain three in our final match here at EUIC. One nail biter. This is it. This is, this is the one. An opportunity for both players now for one final attempt to try and make it into day two of this EUIC 2024. Tell you what, can we get more Dialga V-Star on stream? Because watching these metal makers every time is <laughs> so tense. Just waiting to see whether they're going to get the energy or not. Uh, it's, it's, it's like the, the excitement of Maraid on EX with the electric generator, but on another level, because you get to see multiple per turn. You can also do more than four, which is fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> During a game. Um, but yeah, Brent gave it a real good go there, trying to try and utilize all the pieces that was available to him to do get a chance to replay this game too. Currently going first was pretty vital as well. Being able to get that barrel set up you know, which is something he didn't have access to in game one. Allow them to just keep drawing through that deck. You just see that swing turn once you get the Star Kronos off with the Dialga V-Star. It changes the game completely. That moment there, suddenly the game was no longer in Brent's control. And that's when Corentin played the final game out very well. Got the super rods to put the energy back in. And with that Rotom V in play, it was the liability on board that gave the win. Oh, that frustration. Not quite sure whether there was enough energy in deck. And there was. Here we go. The prizes for game three. Pokemon fans, we're here now seeing what is at stake for this final game of our day one here at EUIC. Brent kicking us off. Buddy Buddy Poffin. That's going to be uh, seen a lot throughout EUIC. <laughs> buddy Buddy Poffin, one of the most powerful cards out of Temporal Forces just working so, so well in those early turns to set up. But the advantage of it over something like Battle VIP Pass of the past is that you can utilize it throughout the game at any moment. So not all of the decks are vulnerable to those slow first turns. A perfect Buddy Buddy Poffin into Nespel once again to grab that Rotom V. Maybe just want to double check those prizes. I do see the Forest Seal Stone in there as well, so can utilize Rotom being a V Pokemon, of course. Uh, to activate that Star Alchemy V-Star ability at some point during this game. 
Yeah, Rotom V has really become one of the most important cards in those early turns for Charizard EX. We started seeing some decks including two counts of it, just because if it's prized, it's so detrimental to those early turns. As we see the three cards drawn off the top, off that instant charge, and Brent is set for next turn. Yeah, caught a glimpse of that hand as well. It's looking pretty sharp. Even hit the Forest Seal Stone there. I think that's Ultra Balls, Rare Candies, Charizard EX. There's a lot going on. As we go over to Corindin, who will match Brent's first turn with the Buddy Buddy Poffin as well. Yeah, and the Buddy Buddy Poffin will be able to search out those Beldum and the Bidoof. But outside of that, I don't think that hand looked like it had much going on. I, there was a few cards I couldn't quite make out. But you need to start seeing the Dialga hopefully find a T TM Evolution. That's an Ultra Ball there. Maybe you could go for something like the Mew EX. Yeah, otherwise these cards aren't the most useful for this turn. He needs to play down some cards and just kind of thin out as much as possible to maybe even use Restart as an ability. Radiant Greninja, there's an energy in hand, so yeah. maybe. But yeah, it's going to be a tough one here. This is a, a decision. Yeah, he's gone for the Mew EX. He's going to play down his hand as much as he can. Of course, he's, I think, three playable cards, right? An Energy, Super Rod, and I think um, one more playable card there. Well, I mean, there's a Super Rod. It's not going to be something you want to play at this stage. Well, not ideal, but... You've just discarded one. You don't want to play the other. Prime Catcher, you don't want to play that as yeah, well. Needs must. Needs must, Mike. Might be just a restart for one. It's, uh, I mean, he does have, I guess, a little bit of time. Yeah, there you go. He's wanting to try and maximize the value of that restart just for two here. Big. Here's the Greninja and energy, so it could continue going. Keep digging. Keep digging, sir. You can find it, I promise you. There it is. Oh, hello. And that's exactly <laughs> what you want to be seeing, but we're leaving the Mew EX in the active. Not ideal, but it will be able to start setting up future turns. No Dialga down. That's the only problem, right? Yeah. And there we go. You have to choose those two Pokemon before evolving. So we'll be going for a Bidoof and a Beldum there to evolve into a Barrel Brent's and a Matang. Brent's surely licking his lips here. There's an easy, squishy new EX in the active spot here. Only 180 HP. Perfect numbers for a Charizard EX to, some, to come up and start swinging away. Weak to Dark type as well. So oh, yeah. just making sure. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, blowing up. There's the V-Star counter flipped over from Brent's side of the board. Star Alchemy utilized once again for a Seal Stone. Just such a fantastic card to basically utilize a quick search early on when you need to, then setting up the quick search for the rest of the game. Yeah, so often we see the Forest Seal Stone in combination with the Pidgeot EX quick search to set up everything. But actually, Brent here able to set up both Pidgeot EX and the Charizard EX without using the quick search. There's an opportunity as well. If you didn't just clock that penny at the bottom, of that deck. An opportunity to just kind of remove Rotom V out of play at some point. Um, uh, it has been a liability in both exactly. games. As, as Brent now decides to utilize that quick search, just wants to kind of get the board set up first, prioritizing that for now, can always quick search for the penny later. No Dialga in play, so you've got a little bit more time to play with. For sure, for sure. There's a Charmeleon there. Of course, doesn't have to reveal exactly what he's chosen from that quick search ability. Um, but, well, here we go. He just take the penny. I'll oh, put the energy on it as well earlier, but so we'll be able to attach that from hand. Oh, maybe, maybe not ideal having a, having a look there. And, and that Rotom V has just gone into the discard pile, so that will need to go into the hand and all the cards that were attached to it as well. Yeah. Penny is a fantastic card that we've seen a lot in the sort of control archetypes, being able to soak up some damage and then pick up the basic Pokemon and all attached cards into your hand. So we'll make sure that's followed up as well as we do see the attack. Burning Darkness, 180 damage, times two with the Mew EX there. Now putting a clock on Quarantine's side of the board. Well, let's get it. Let's get it and see what's possible. And we said how tough it is for Dialga to set up. And on this occasion, we're seeing exactly why that can be the case. So sort of just removing that liability from the board state as well. I mean, Corentin's typical sort of gusting options was that prime catcher, which had to be used early to try and draw some more cards. Also that counter catches that is played as well. But this is, yeah, 
Backs up against the Wolf of Quarantine, I think, Mike. It's going to be a tough one to try and come back from this. No Dialga Vs to be able to evolve up to a V-Star yet, as we do see an attachment to the active and the barrel for four cards. Here we go. Two energies. Super Rod. Is that an Iono? At least a supporter that could be played. It's just got to find a way to get the Dialga set up. That's the challenge now. Needs a lot more than what, what they're seeing at this stage. Yeah. The, the Charizard EX sitting in the active for Brent, it is just scary. Staring you down, able to take <laughs> these knockouts. Uh, knockout after knockout, and that's why Charizard EX has been so popular and so good. Metal Makers for two to the active. That Matang looks like it might be swinging soon here, Mike. Who would have thought that might happen? Well, I mean, it's an attack. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the ideal attack, but it is an attack. Yeah. Uh, beam for 60. 60. That's not going to... Is that going to scratch the Charizard EX? Um, it starts to bring it in range. It becomes basically in range like a Pidgeot EX's. Yeah, that's true. I mean, everything you can do to put it in range. I mean, the one prize board state is great at this stage, but then you have to put a Dialga V in play eventually. Uh, thankfully, it is out of range mm -hmm. of the Charizard EX. But at some point, Quarantine is going to have to find a way to get that down. There's the Iono being played now. A slight bit of disruption, of course. We know when you're disrupting Pidgeot EX, it's sometimes not enough, as you can just tutor out any cards you'd like. Does hit the Charizard EX, so kind of move up the bench Charmeleon as well at some stage, or maybe use it to swing into the Matang for a knockout. We'll see what's, uh, what's going on here for Quarantine. There we go, the Dialga V able to get it into play. Yeah, so here we go. What else can Quarantine try and conjure up here in this scenario? Dialga V start in hand as well, so it has the next turn sort of set up here. It's a beam for 60. Here we go. Over to Brent. Maybe start swinging away, dealing some damage to that Dialga V. Make soften it up a little. His Syrian heavy ball being played now. No targets available. But, you know, just again, more information that's available for Brent. So you do see the evolution up. Infernal Rain being activated here. Playing this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. You can attach up to three fire energies from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. There's the boss's orders as well from the quick search. Targeting. Quarantine's draw engine here. Fantastic decision, I believe, from Brent here to just kind of limit what Quarantine has access to. Now we wait and see. Will those swing turns later on with Star Kronos come through? Is it possible to take a knockout early on? I mean, there's nothing in range of the Star Kronos, so it might have to be a two-hit knockout. I mean, with the 60 damage on the active, that's down 270. So even with the Defiance Band, it's not in range of the Star Cronus. Yeah, so, so just building up the board now, just trying to find a way to start taking down one of these Charizard EX. They're so far out of range. Yeah, exactly that. This is the, this is the only trouble here. Yeah, 220, as you kind of correctly highlighted, it's just not enough. Could maybe do some chip damage once again, but then there's another Charizard EX just waiting in the wings right now. You need that Metang as well. You want to be using that for the Metal Maker, not for its attack. Yeah, especially when it's holding on to free energies. And there we go. It's another energy attachment to the active here. So it can start swinging, start chipping away at this Charizard EX as well with that Metal Blast attack, currently dealing 40 plus 40 damage. Oh, there's an extra two from the Metal Maker. So starting to swing away and get a lot of damage on. 160 plus 40 more, 200 damage there from Metal Blast. Just a little bit more needed to start swinging away. Can't be returned KO'd, which is fantastic. I mean, that's really important at this stage with the Dialga V on the bench, because that's also out of range, so just protected from that double knockout. And we'll have to try and get a big swing turn later on. And you can see Brent preparing for that by putting some uh, evolvable basics on to the bench, ready to go. Yeah, two of those rare candies.
currently used, of course, one for the char initial Charizard and the Pidgeot EX. Access to two more somewhere in deck, hand, or prizes, as there's the Arvin for the, what looked like the Super Rod and that Prime Catcher. Oh, actually, sorry, Defiance Band and the Prime Catcher. Yeah, Defiance Band's an interesting one. It has featured in and out of Charizard EX in history, and I think it's one that uh, has fallen out of favor recently for a lot of people as they've included things like Maximum Belt or uh, Choice Belt, depending on what they're aiming to knock out. What, what, what is the benefit of Defiance Band in these lists? I mean, especially when you sometimes opt to go second in these setup decks, of course. You do sometimes lose maybe your sort of single prizes like a Charmander or a Pidgey. That ramps up your damage to maybe 210. But sometimes you just need to stretch that little bit further to KO, especially a lot of the EX Pokemon, which have over 210 HP. And that Defiance Band is an opportunity there to swing away. As we do see the Prime Catcher gusting up one of those Matangs with the free energies, it looks like. And a massive KO once again, just trying to limit what Corentin has access to with a fresh Charizard EX. Yeah, no hand here for Corentin. Just getting the top deck there. Taking away a Metal Maker will reduce the damage output of this Dialga. And uh, this is the, the, the moment where Brent is just trying to chip away, take those prize cards one at a time to get themselves in range of that final knockout. As Charizard EX's damage output goes up, that's when we'll see the final knockout. But for now, Brent has to just wait. He has to wait and let Quarantine take a knockout at some point. Uh, and yeah, Star Kronos gives you two turns in a row, but that's not enough to take six prizes we'll have to try and find a way to disrupt as well. Yeah, so this is vital here. Just deciding which attack to utilize. Won't be taking a knockout with this attack, regardless of which one he chooses. Currently five energies. Defiance Band that we've just spoken about from Corentin's side of the board, just to add the extra 30 damage there as well. Looks like a, just a Metal Blast swing away with five Metal Energies attached now. So 240 damage plus the 30 from Defiance Band. So just not quite getting in range, and that Metang knockout from Brent will have reduced the amount of energy that was possible to get there. And this is the real struggle for Dialga. Without the barrel, it becomes very difficult to draw those cards you need each turn to take those big knockouts. Just a bit too much to set up, and Brent has done so well uh, to disrupt it along the way. I mean, right now, it doesn't look like there's any time left. We'll get confirmation of what the scenario is. Two prizes left for Brent's side has evolved up that second Pidgeot EX, wary if Quarantine is able to find a way to swing into it, following a Star Kronos, of course, making sure that he always will have access to one more quick search on his turns. So just checking through the deck here, once you're in these end game scenarios, you have to make sure you have all the options available and we'll be just attaching some energies and using that quick search to thin those out, giving you options, right? Yeah, just to recall and make sure everyone knows as well that Pidgeot EX, you may search your deck for any card and put it into your hand, but you can only use one quick search ability each turn. So I won't be able to, of course, utilize a second Pidgeot EX. And there's a swing away here by Brent on that Dialga V-Star. Quarantine, it's your turn. Is there anything you can conjure up in your final couple of turns? Confirmation, I think, there, just from Corentin. Just, he is turn one. There you go. A little notification there. By the die in the middle of the table as well. So Corentin has to take it to a point where he levels up the game and Brent somehow is unable to take a retaliation, a retaliation knockout. And we have an interesting scenario here with turns because Corentin is going to be taking two turns in a row. So that changes up how the final uh, three turns will go. So Brent was turn zero before. Quarantine will be turn one and two if he gets a star Kronos off. And then Brent will be the final turn there. It was uh, interesting with Medicham seeing how that could change those final games. Sometimes yeah. you deny your opponent from getting the turns that they wanted. Uh, and we'll see how that goes here. Yeah, for example, if Quarantine was turn two and utilized star Kronos, he would effectively wrestle away turn three. It could be turn zero, two, and three. Yeah, but it just so happens that Brent has one more turn in some way, shape, or form. Prepping the missed energy on that Pidgeot EX is also another way to have an attacker with, as long as he hits an energy or finds an energy or has one available. There's a Star Kronos. 
That was utilized and flipped over. Turn two of time now. There's the boss's order on the damaged Charizard EX on the bench. I mean, the, the situation here, the only way to really deny the Pidgeot the knockout would have been with that full metal lab. This is the final turn. Pidgeot, is there a fire energy in the deck? There it is. And Brent is going to be taking our round nine here at EUIC, a regional champion, Mr. Worldwide, <laughs> reigning in from the Oceania region, has made it through to day two of EUIC, navigating that matchup beautifully in the final turns there, the final 